Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Happy New Year. Happy 2021 to all of you. Uh, may all of you have good things come into your lives. So many good things that, hey, you'll wake up one morning and think you've gone to heaven. But you won't. It'll just be a good life. I really wish that for you and uh, for my loved ones and myself too. May this year be awesome. What are we going to look at this today? Uh, this video, The Mangrove by CJRB. But before we get into that, I just want to address one thing. I've had some people comment and even got email. Um, Jake, why are you begging for money? Why are you begging for subscribers? I don't see it that way. I don't see that I'm begging for anything. I'm simply making a request for stuff that I think is something I'm worth. I don't see myself as worth nothing. Uh, you're watching this video essentially for free. Some of you Patreon supporters, I think there's 42 or 44 of you guys right now. 44 of my viewers, I've got 10,000 subscribers, uh, find that these videos are of enough value that they support me financially, you know, two, five dollars a month. I think these videos are worth more than that. I'm not asking you to give more than that. I'm not saying you Patreon supporters are supposed to give more. Not, not, a, not a bit. All I'm saying is, I think these videos are worthwhile. I put in uh, approximately 10 hours a day into Canadian Cutting Edge. Either researching knives, testing knives, uh, preparing the script, not script, preparing my notes for the video, doing all the measurements, uh, doing my test cutting, going online, finding prices, getting the links that I put down below so that it's easy for you guys to buy the knife instead of you having to go search for it, especially if you're in North America. Unfortunately, sometimes a lot of these knives are hard to find in Europe or outside of North America. Like this one, for instance, the mangrove. I couldn't find it. Uh, I think I've got one place, Australia, that's outside of North America, where I found the mangrove. I'll put a link for that down below. Uh, but I put in more than that, a lot of work into this, uh, and it's expensive. It really is. It's not cheap to make a YouTube channel. Yes, it's free for me to upload to YouTube, but it's not free for me, period. So if I ask for stuff, you know, I live on a disability pension and I'm not ashamed of it. It is the way my life has worked out. And uh, that's how it is. And uh, if you're watching this and you think I'm begging for stuff, stop watching. You know, if you're offended, turn it off. I have a pretty good feeling that 99.9% .9 of the viewers are not feeling offended when I beg for something because they don't see it as begging for something. I'm just asking for something that I need to make this channel better so that you can have better videos to watch. That's my goal. You want better videos? I want better videos. We all want the same thing. And since it costs a little bit of money, you know, it's, it's got to come from somewhere. And I'm just asking you guys to help out. Uh, for instance, this camera that I want, I want to raise for myself, wherever I can find it, uh, half of the price at least. And I'm hoping my YouTube subscribers can cover the other half. Uh, I've got a pool on YouTube, you, uh, YouTube, pay, PayPal. PayPal's got this pool option, which means we can pool funds. Uh, I've got a link for it. The link's down below. Uh, three people have given already towards it. Uh, the lowest donation from those is like $17.5 Canadian. Another one was $20, another one was $25. Uh, you know, if you can help out, help me out. If you can't, don't. Don't feel bad if you want to help out, but you've got a very tight budget. I know some of you guys have your own, you're living with disability pensions yourself. And believe me, I know how frustrating and how tight the finances can be. Uh, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking for those people who have the opportunity to give a little bit, maybe give a little bit. Another way to look at this is, uh, I'm the employee, you guys are the employer. Uh, I do this for you. I put in all this time and effort and work. Don't I deserve an income for it? Don't I deserve to get something back? Well, I'm... 
I'm not asking for anything near a legitimate income from this. I'm just asking for a tiny little fraction of what these videos are worth. At least I think they got value. I think you think they've got value or you wouldn't be watching them. It's really that simple. They're valuable and I'm asking for some of that value to be tangibly returned to me. It's really that simple. And I thank you very much for everyone that helps me out. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. I'm going to have the giveaway of your, the knife giveaway draw. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, for my Patreon supporters, at the beginning of every month, I do a random draw to pick one of my Patreon supporters to win one of the knives of their choice that I reviewed in the previous month. I might hold back one knife for myself to put into my permanent collection. Sometimes maybe two, but very seldom. And uh, they win that, and I give them that knife that they've chosen, and I also give them something extra as well, something a surprise. I like giving back, because you guys are good to me. So thank you to everybody who's willing to help me out. Uh, this year, again, I'm going to focus on budget knives, uh, but I'm not going to give myself sort of that soft ceiling of 60 US dollars. I'm going to give myself that soft ceiling of 100 US dollars. 100 US dollars and below is for the knives that I'm going to review, but I'm always going to be looking for those $30 knives, those $25 knives. Uh, that's my primary goal that I want to find. So if you find good knives, at a good price, comment down below. You can leave a link for them as well, or you can just simply email me, CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com. Send me an email for stuff that's good. Now, I am picky because there's a lot of garbage out there. And unfortunately, uh, some of my viewers uh, might not be as aware of the quality of knives. Um, I, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but sometimes I get suggestions to review garbage. And I really don't want to do that. Uh, I want to review good knives. That's better for everybody. Uh, and enough of all that. I've talked to you. I've talked your ear off enough about that kind of stuff. Well, let's take a look at this knife. This is by CJRB. That is Artisan Cutlery's budget brand. And I've got a video coming up soon, I hope, about CJRB Artisan Cutlery's uh, warranty service. Uh, post sale service. Unfortunately, it's not very good. Don't ask me the details yet. You'll get a whole video on it uh, before too long. Uh, but the quality of their products themselves are generally quite good. Uh, this one's got a few issues, but it's also got some good stuff. It's a sort of a, a Nesmuk style blade, a drop point kind of thing. The handle has got this sort of, I don't know, some people are calling that caveman style handle, uh, G10, all 3D milled, deep pocket clip right and left, liner lock. Let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at this thing. Keep watching. So here's the mangrave, mangrove, almost said mangrave. I like that uh, stone wash. I, stone wash is my favorite finish. And uh, this stone wash is pretty good. Let me get this to stay close and focused. Yeah, sorry about the uh, light right there. I've got one of those ring lights surrounding the uh, cell phone. So if I turn it off, I don't get enough light. So there you go. Got a nice swedge up here. Looks kind of cool. Flat all the way up to here. And Ricasso here. A slow plunge right here. Big finger forward choil. Actually, no, not big finger forward choil. It's, yeah, my finger gets nicked a little bit when I grab it like this, if I'm working hard. Um, I was cutting a bunch of cardboard and some other things. Yeah, and I got nicked. It didn't bleed or anything, but uh, that's also where I cut my finger one time. Yeah, it's about two years ago now, a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, it was one of those uh, cuts like this where it took a, a slice off the surface. 
And so it is a bit extra sensitive there, but, you know, I grew up left-handed and became ambidextrous, so I did it in my left hand for a while, and same thing, you know, it nicked on my finger a little bit. So that choil should be bigger. Uh, it's unfortunate that it isn't bigger right from the start. Uh, my hands are just barely into the extra large range. Uh, that's in uh, North American men's glove sizes, but not between 9 and 10 in uh, the European men's glove sizes. So yeah, I'd wish this was a little bit bigger. But nice and smooth, uh, very lightly rounded edges here. I wouldn't call it chamfered, it's just lightly rounded. And, uh, you know, the writing on the knife, I do like that it's on the flats, but it's a little bit darker than I prefer. Uh, what they say, S-E-R, uh, I would think that that would stand for serial number, but no, that's not a serial number. That's the model number, J1910, also known as the Mangrove, a D2, and it says China, right there. And here's the brand name, CJRB. That's the budget line of Artisan Cutlery. We've got ceramic ball bearings surrounded by uh, nylon holders, a ceramic detent, it's a fairly soft detent, unfortunately. It just, you know, it doesn't really do much. Uh, you can take the knife and just do a hard flick with your wrist, at least while I'm standing, and the blade just comes flying out. Um, I'll see if I can do it here. Yeah, this was just, I was just a little ways off camera and got it to open that far. So yeah, the detent's a little bit weak. Lock up. It's a little bit later than I like lockup to be, but nothing terrible, nothing bad. It's fairly close to the middle. I like it to be just at the leading edge right there like that. The uh, lock arm, it's got a nice chamfered edge there. So uh, it's easy to get in there with your thumb to release the liner lock. No lock stick or anything, so that's very well done. Uh, blade centering. This is something I keep forgetting to do in my videos, and then it ends up being later in the video. Look at that. The centering is very near perfect. Pretty, quite good, actually. Uh, not even close to the liners. The liners are not skeletonized at all. Uh, the balance point on the knife is right there, so that's pretty good. If they did skeletonize it, it would bring the balance point over this way, and I like the balance point to be right where your index finger rests. The uh, liners here, the edges are just ever so slightly softened, so it's not sharp on the finger at all to run your finger along there or in the back here, which I really hate it when that edge, those edges are sharp. Um, they could have done a little bit of a relief on the inner edges here so that the thumb can sit in there better, have a little better security, but no, that's not bad. The G10, solid G10. So that's milled G10. There's milling lines that go down across on a diagonal across here. Done quite well. There's a hole here for the uh, pocket clip to come on this side. They didn't put a cap on it. It's, I wish they would have. Uh, this knife costs a little bit more than Ganzo knives do, and Ganzo can afford to put a little plate over those. So, yeah. Here's the pocket clip. It's a deep pocket clip. They got button screws. CJRB is changing, uh, moving away from button screws. It's a little bit hot in the hand. Uh, when you're working hard for a long time, uh, the, the handle's a little bit small this way. If it was deeper this way, not that deep, but deeper a little bit, then I think this might not be quite as hot in the hand, but especially if I use my left hand on the right side pocket clip, that's uncomfortable. But if the pocket clip is on the inside on the hand, it's still a little bit hot, but not terrible. So there's that. Uh, lanyard hole back here. It's full-size lanyard hole for 550 paracord, no problem. I wish they would have chamfered those edges a little bit. Button screws that are recessed, you know, I wish they'd go on with, you know, proper flat screws that are, you know, so it's smooth across the top instead of, again, a little ridge in there. Well, the opposite of a ridge. A little bit of a, a trench in there where you know dust and dirt can get in there. And then we come to the backspacers. Uh, there's two of them there. Yeah, they look good. Nice hourglass shape. I like those. 
the uh, like I was saying, the action, the ceramic, very smooth. I like that. It's not uh, what some people call drop shutty, but it's close. Now, for this price of knife, it's not bad. This is $39.99 at White Mountain Knives. You save 10% with code CCE, and that makes it $35.99. $35.99 American for this knife, yeah, that's pretty good. If you like the styling and you don't mind, you know, the few little negative things, then there you go. Let's go, before I go into all the negatives and positives, let's go over all the sizes and dimensions and things. This will be on the screen while I'm doing that. The weight of this knife, 139 grams, that's 4.9 ounces. So yeah, it's almost a five ounce knife. The sharpness from the factory, 185 bess, and that's because it was poorly sharpened. The cutting edge length, 8.08 .08 centimeters, which is 3.181 inches. The blade length tipped to the G10, 8.92 centimeters, that's 3.512, so just over three and a half inches. The blade thickness, 3.17 millimeters, which is an eighth of an inch exactly. The blade depth, and I measure it at the widest spot this time, and I'm going to try to do that from now on. Uh, for the 2020 year, 2021 year, uh, I'll be doing the widest spot here. 28.5 millimeters, which is 1.122 inches. And then the thickness of the edge behind the grind, right about where my thumbnail is, that is 0.63 millimeters, 24 and a half thousandths of an inch. Yeah, so it's a little bit thick behind the grind from the factory. I prefer it to be around 20 thousandths, or maybe even less. The grind angles, now this is where they really messed up. Let me see if I get it right. Yeah, this side. The grind angle around where my finger is 12.9 degrees. And then it gets even less closer to the tip, down to 10.8 degrees. The other side, 24.6 degrees, all the way down to 26.2 degrees. So, somebody didn't sharpen this thing very well. I'm going to sharpen this to probably somewhere between 18 and 20 degrees per side. Probably closer to 18 than 20. Um, Oh, by the way, D2, uh, Artisan Cutlery is the parent company. Uh, Love Them Knives has had some Artisan Cutlery D2 tested, and the hardness has been 63 on the Rockwell scale on one of them and 62.7 on the other one. That's harder than I like. Uh, when it's that hard, uh, that's when D2 likes to start chipping. I like uh, D2 to be done to about 59 to 60 on the Rockwell hardness scale. It makes it more durable. You know, if it's too hard, it it can fracture too easily, at least at the edge. Talking about the handle now, the handle length, 12.02 centimeters, 4.73 inches. The uh, grip area between my thumbs, since this is rounded, I have to give a rounded number, around 10 centimeters, about four inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is about 15.05 millimeters, which is 0.593 of an inch. I like it. If it was thinner, it would be even hotter in the hand with that pocket clip. So I like that it's almost 0.6 of an inch. The handle depth, it's at the grip area is where I'm going to measure it. So anywhere on the grip area, the handle depth, and that's how I'm going to do it for 2021, is uh, right here, the biggest spot. 23.58 millimeters, that's 0.928 inches. The depth of the handle, and then this I'm going to do anywhere, so if it's got a flipper, it'll probably be right there. 38.82 millimeters, which is 1.528 inches. So it's not very big to fit in the pocket. It's a full-size knife, but not super size or anything. And the total length of this knife is... 20.95 centimeters. And again, I did it again. I didn't mark down the inches. That equals eight and a quarter inches. So let's go over the pros and the cons and the summary of this knife. Pros, I like the look. It's got, it's unique. It's not like anything else that you see out there. 
Um, I like it when companies do stuff that's a little bit different, and this knife is different. Certainly it's not to everybody's taste, but I think it's a pretty nice knife. The action's very smooth. I like that they use ceramic. That's great. Um, the standoffs here, well, good job done. Alignment, very good. Lanyard hole, yeah, it's pretty good. The lock release here, I like that. That's pretty good. Uh, the brass that they put here uh, on the collar for the pivot screw, quite good. The uh, flipper tab works well. Uh, it's not hot on the hand anywhere. You can do push button method. Uh, you can do light switch method. Good things. And just before I go over the cons, let's take a look at this knife taken apart. So here it is taken apart. Oh, I haven't cleaned it yet, but uh, we've got ceramic ball bearings in white nylon uh, holders. Uh, here's the uh, collars for it. I think this is brass, to be honest with you, solid brass, I think. And uh, you know, no skeletonizing, but uh, yeah, there you go. D-shaped pivot pin, and uh, there's a D-shape on this piece right here. And that's what keeps the uh, pivot pin from spinning. It just fits in there. It moves back and forth a tiny bit, but it can't spin. They've got the same thing as the knife I looked at on the previous video. They've got a Torx T8 on both the pin and the screw. So how do you know which one's the pin and which is the screw? You don't until you start turning them. So if it moves a little bit and then stops, that's the pin. I really wish they would take this side and just make it either solid or put, uh, you know, a little bit of their logo or something or a graphic design or something on it instead of doing it that way. Now these screws, the little ones, they do have Loctite on them. And I did uh, slip a little bit with a screwdriver. So let me put this thing back together and let's see the rest of this video. And now for the cons on this knife. The pocket clip, it's hot in the hand. They use button screws when they could have used flush screws. Hopefully, you know, the future editions of this, if they do another run of these, they'll use flush screws. So there's that. Uh, the detent's too soft, so either the ball is not um, sticking out far enough on the lock bar arm, or it's not getting into the hole that's on the side of the blade properly. Another con, a very tiny one, I wish they would have chamfered the holes in the lanyard. They didn't sharpen it well. I really wish they would have sharpened it well. Uh, what's worse is it's a little too thick behind the grind, so I don't know if that's a sharpening issue. I think that's probably how thick they made the blade, so I wish it was a little thinner behind the edge. Being a saber grind that's only, you know, a centimeter and a half high here, 15 millimeters or so, that means it has to go from the full thinness to the full thickness of the blade in a short distance, and that generally ends up being thick behind the grind. Um, lock up, it's later than I would like, but that's a very minor thing because it's not super late at all. Um, the forward finger choil here, not big enough. It needs to be a little bit bigger bigger to be safe. No skeletonizing. I wish they would have made this uh, knife a little bit lighter somehow. But five ounces really isn't all that bad. I don't mind carrying knives that are up to seven, eight ounces. But I know there's a lot of people that want lighter knives. So is that a con that this thing's 4.9 ounces? No and yes. It really depends on... The person that's wanting the knife. And uh, finally, like I mentioned before, I'd like to have a little plate to cover this up here that would make this show side look a whole lot better. I do want them to have the left side pocket clip. So yeah, it's got some pros, it's got some cons. You have to decide for yourself if the pros outweigh the cons, if you like the styling to start with. And if you do like the styling, I think the pros can can outweigh the cons because the cons on this thing, there might be, uh, what, six or seven of them that are all pretty minor. So, hey, and this is one of thousands of knives. Most CJRB knives, they lock up exactly like I want them. Most CRJB liner locks have a better detent. 
Uh, some of the newer ones are coming out with the flush screws. Uh, a lot of them are lighter, you know. So most of the issues, you know, it's not systemic with CJRB. Uh, the issues that are here, it could be just this specific knife has got several more minor issues than most of them do. I will be doing a video in a short while, probably within, uh, by the middle of September, September, whoa, by the middle of January, I hope I'll have a video talking about CJRB's warranty, post-service warranty. Um, and not just what the warranty says, but what actually happens in real life. Because I had an issue with one knife, and I'm still dealing with uh, trying to get that solved. And I'll tell you my exact experience. I approached them as a regular consumer, not as a YouTuber, so that I could give you uh, feedback on what it's like for just a regular consumer. So there you go. The J1910 CJRB Mangrove. Thanks for watching. If you're a Patreon supporter, I do appreciate your help. For those of you who do want to help with the uh, camera fund, the pool, I appreciate your support. The links are down below. To everyone, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. But most of all, remember, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.